It is a beautiful evening in Tallahassee, and you're watching the ACC on ESPN. Florida's capital city and the campus of FSU, the site for college basketball tonight as we welcome you inside the Donald L. Tucker Center. The Citadel Bulldogs taking on the Seminoles of Florida State. Good evening, everybody. Thanks so much for spending part of your Friday evening with us. Tom Block and former Seminole Adrian Crawford. We've got a show in store tonight because the Citadel likes to push the tempo. So if you like offense, this is the game for you. Absolutely. Again, the Citadel is the type of team, I mean, they, their motto this year is embrace the pace. They want to get the ball up and down the floor. Three seconds, five seconds of the shot clock. They're trying to get a shot at the basket. It's going to be a very entertaining ball game tonight. Not surprisingly, they are uh, led by some folks on the perimeter, including sophomore guard Preston Parks. Yeah, Preston Parks, again, high volume score, again, leading this Citadel team. Again, can really shoot the ball, put it on the floor to really get it done. Tariq Simmons is a freshman from Columbia, South Carolina. Tariq Simmons, again, a guy who's got 61 shot attempts so far in these first five games. Again, volume shooter. And Matt Frierson shoots accurately from beyond the arc. Again, it's another good test for the Seminoles last, uh, last game. Played against someone who shot 55. This guy shooting 48 from the three. Got to be ready to go. Let's talk about Florida State. Last time out, Phil Kofer, a senior who's been plagued by injuries during his career, Really looked good getting an opportunity, and you can see he's healthy again. Absolutely. Phil Kofer is that lunch pail guy. He's coming in with his hard hat on, his work boots ready to get to work. Brian Angola, quietly a very good perimeter shooter and guard for Florida State. Absolutely. Last game, 7 for 8 from the field. And, again, big time dunk at the near the end of the game. Actually showing some great athleticism. Angola and the Seminoles trying to defend their home court. The starting lineups have just been introduced here at the Tucker Center. We will play basketball momentarily. Florida State unblemished early in the season at 4-0. The Citadel comes in 3-2 as we take a look at their starting five. Preston Parks, Frankie Johnson, and Kalen Harris. Then Hayden Brown and Zane Najdawi. So three guards, two forwards. It's one of the smallest rosters in the lineup against uh, in the country against one of the tallest rosters in the country. C.J. Walker, Brian Angola, Terrence Mann, the leader of this team, Phil Kofer, and Ike Obiagu, a talented freshman for Florida State. The Seminoles, without the services of Chris Kumaji tonight and for the foreseeable future, we'll talk about that as the broadcast moves along. But, Adrian, for now, catch your breath, settle in. We're ready to tip things off here because uh, Duger Bauckham, Believes in the Paul Westhead philosophy, which is if you've crossed half court, you've got the green light to pull the trigger. <laughs> Duger Balkan would have been the guy I would have liked to play for. I mean, <laughs> volume shots. I mean, the rim's always open in his offense. Leonard Hamilton, of course, has hung his hat on defense over the years, and that defensive uh, philosophy will be tested tonight because uh, you can't leave your man free. They're going to pull the trigger. Absolutely. Florida State wins the opening tip. It goes to Kofer and then Oles. We'll work first, working to the left in the home gold, gold unis trimmed in garnet and white piping. Florida State trying to run its record to 5-0 and here early in the season. Citadel comes out in a matchup zone again. Figured they would do this again with the size advantage of Florida State. Again, trying to get Florida State a little bit disrupted early on. Again, try to keep that ball outside the paint. Good half court set for Florida State. A good look. The shot would not go down, but Florida State will get a second opportunity and they'll reset it. Here's Kofer inside the alley-oop. Oh, it won't go either. Florida State had its hands on that basketball but lost it out of bounds. Couple of good looks for Florida State. Absolutely, again, uh, Ike that time, again, fumbled the basketball. But again, you're gonna notice that a little bit sometimes with these freshman guys, these freshman bigs, learning the pace of the game. And, and again, but he's showing some real promise for the Seminoles. Frankie Johnson handles the basketball. C.J. Walker D's him up and out of the wing, and they don't pull the trigger initially. So, again, I think the Citadel's going to have to – it's going to be something they haven't faced because this Florida State team with this length is going to cause them a lot of trouble tonight. C.J. Walker, quick hands, and now two on two, stolen away. Good hands by Preston Parks back the other way. Nifty pass, but we're going to have a travel down low. Hayden Brown couldn't corral it. Well, we're end-to-end, end, but no scores yet. 18.47 to play, just underway. Again, one of the things Citadel does, they mix up their defense because what they're trying to do because of being so small, 
They're going to constantly mix it up, try to get you to think just a little bit, a little bit more, get Florida State out of the rhythm. Because they know Florida State likes to push the pace as well. So you're going to see multiple defenses tonight run by Citadel. Dan Outlaw leads our officiating crew here tonight. They just uh, blew the whistle. That foul was on Hayden Brown on the reach in. You can see the full court defensive look here as Kofor has it. And he'll get it back to the left handed point guard, CJ Walker, who's double teamed. And now Kofor beats the pressure. Terrence Mann for three, and that will rattle home. Again, great job that time by the Seminoles handling the press. Back the other way, that is off the mark, and an air ball chant from the home fans. It'll be Florida State ball. What's the key to handling this press right here that they just did successfully a moment ago? I think the biggest thing is what you got to be able to do is that that ball's got to get to the middle of the floor. You got to be able to make strong, crisp pass, but try to get the ball just like they just did. And again, led to a big time play. That time that ball got to the middle, popped out of his hands, got down, and he got an alley. Again, if Florida State can keep that ball moving, that's the key for the Seminole basketball team is keeping that ball moving. They got it to the middle, and C.J. Walker, and there's the look in the second foul on the Citadel, that was Kalen Harris. And to the stripe goes Ike Obiagu, who spent, I beg your pardon, they're gonna say that uh, they'll trigger it in instead. I was gonna say Obiagu spent a lot of time working on his free throw stroke earlier today. Angola shot no good, Florida State size inside. Already wreaking havoc for against Citadel. That's five points now for Mann. Terrence Mann is that guy that everybody, every coach loves, the guy defends, guy rebounds the basketball, and the guy who can score the ball, truly the leader of the Seminole Club. He's a coach's kid. You can relate to that. Absolutely. <laughs> I tell people, if you, coach's, coach's Kids Club, man, it's got to be in your DNA to have that IQ, and he really has it. C.J. Walker with a nice job defensively. He has a relentlessness about him, a little toughness for just a sophomore who played pretty extensively last year for Florida State. He's part of the boom squad, the bench bunch for FSU. Absolutely. C.J. Walker is that guy that, man, brings just a high level of intensity and toughness. And, again, when you have him and Phil Kofer, those are the type of guys you want to have in a fight with you. Those two guys, and, again, along with the rest of the Seminole Bunch, got a tough group on the floor. Another knock away. Obiago scoops it up, and here's Angola. Looking for help, finds Walker. Great That's extra pass. ball movement. Great extra pass. When this Seminole team doesn't let the ball stick, they are an impressive bunch. Associate head coach Stan Jones and I uh, conversed before the game as this one is off the mark. He said this team really likes each other. And you can see ball movement like that, it's easy to believe a statement like that. Absolutely. Again, when we were the other night uh, watching them when they were when they were playing, the thing about the Florida State team, when they're getting that ball moving, six, seven, six, seven passes in the half court set, it always led to good things. And again, that's got to be because you like playing with each other. Good start for Florida State. Eight zip, the Knolls already on top. There's the trap. and. Florida State beats the pressure and now we'll settle into a half court offensive flow. Terrence Mann out to a really good start tonight for FSU. Oh, a scoop shot. I think that was the right hand from the lefty there, CJ Walker, too. Absolutely. CJ Walker with that relentless pressure on them. And again, one thing Florida State's doing is handle the press well, because if you handle it well, then teams eventually will start to get out of it. That's two feet outside the arc. The long rebound corralled by Angola, he's going one on three. Thinks the better of it. There's an extra pass again and one more. Here's Kofer and that's gotta be a foul. Shot goes. And they're gonna call that a blocking foul. I thought they might, got Co might get Kofer there, but it's gonna go his way. <laughs> Absolutely, again, great ball movement again. Getting that ball from side to side. And again, Phil Kofer right there, good strong move. A little bit of a flop down there, a little Manu Ginobili style. <laughs> but then they ended up calling the block. So great job by Phil Kofer with the concentration and finish. Kofer, a senior who's had his career derailed or sidetracked by injuries, had a bad ankle injury. and. That was two years ago. Really wasn't 100% last year and didn't play a ton with some of the other guys Florida State had, but probably couldn't have as he was coming back from that ankle injury, but looks good this year. Absolutely. Again, he's one of those guys you root for. Young man plays so hard. And again, it's great to see him healthy this year. Too strong on the free throw. Still a 12-zip start to this game for Florida State. First three minutes, and the Citadel is over. 
One thing I think Florida State uh, has done is they really pride themselves of stopping the best player on the floor. Uh, last week, again, I mean, sorry, last game contest against Kennesaw State, they did the same. And right now you can see a, a focus right here on Preston Park, really trying to shut him down early on. Gets free at the free throw line, and that's the first points of the game for the Citadel. It stops a 12-0 Florida State run to begin this game. And there's a case of the press forcing the turnover and a quick shot, but the three would not flush. Walker to the rim again. Fourteen to two start for the Knowles. That's thrown away. A fourth turnover already here in the early going for the Citadel. A nice start for Leonard Hamilton and the Knowles. CJ Walker and company out to a 14-2 lead over the visitors from the Citadel. Hot start for the Seminoles, and the statistics reflect that. Florida State 2 of 4 from beyond the arc, and the Citadel 0 of 4 so far, so good defense for Florida State. Clearly the length and athleticism for FSU is causing some troubles for the Citadel. Yes, very early on, and again, just like the game against Kennesaw State, Florida State caused four uh, turnovers uh, against Kennesaw State, five turnovers in the first five minutes. Again, this bodes well for the Seminole basketball club when they continue to put pressure on teams. I know the coaching staff for FSU was really pleased with what the starters did at the top of the game and the start of the second half, but wanted a little bit more, especially defensively, out of the bench group, and we see some substitutions now. We'll see how this combination works for Florida State. Topher picks up where he left off the other night. Got four points now. Quick trigger the other way, and Florida State clears the board. They have limited second chance opportunities for the Bulldogs. Wow. That was uh, threading the needle between three defenders to Kofor. Mentioned at the top of our broadcast that Chris Kumaji is not available for Florida State. With more on that, the third member of our crew, here's Catherine Phillips. KP. Good evening, guys. Yeah, Coach Hamilton announced earlier today that junior singer Chris Camadre will be out for an undetermined amount of time with what they told us was a lower extremity injury. That is all that we know. Chris did play the first three games, averaging seven points and 4.3 rebounds. But good news for Florida State, they are not lacking in depth. Lots of guys who can step in and fill his spot. Tom. Catherine, thank you. Adrian, that's not insignificant, though, because Chris Camadre, a, he's tall, and even though he looks a little bit thin, he, he plays with a mean streak and was off to a good start early in this season. Yes, he was. I mean, Chris is a 7-4 guy, and there was averaging almost close to four blocks a game. Again, a real rim protector. And, and now you're kind of limited a little bit with your rim protection. You have to go with a freshman and, um, and Ike uh, to be able to kind of step in again. But again, it may be good for the Seminoles to give Ike to give some opportunities uh, to give him more chance. There is Chris Kumaji, and uh, it would appear that the lower extremity issue involves the right foot, as <laughs> evidenced uh, by Exhibit A on your screen right there. And so we don't know how long he'll be out. He missed last game as well. But uh, he looked to be much improved and a little bit stronger early in this campaign. Wish him luck on the comeback trail. And, you know, Florida State, uh, despite the Citadel liking this frenetic pace, they're almost looking like they're hurrying shots a little bit when they find themselves free to pull up. See what the – that is what length does um, against a team like this because they're making every shot is contested. That was Florida State's uh, focus today. They wanted to make every shot to be a contested shot, really run them off that three-point line. There's a good open look for Matt Frierson, who launched 181 three-point attempts a year ago. How'd you like to have that green light? I mean, that is not even a green light. I mean, that's just not even on the color wheel green. That's <laughs> <laughs> this guy can, I mean, 181 threes, that is amazing. But the, but the thing is, shoots at a high clip, shooting 45% from the three. That's big time. Well, that helps. couple of missed long-range shots from MJ Walker, who's maybe the most prized member of this freshman class. And look at Terrence Mann. He didn't know if he would block it, steal it, whatever. He did basically both, and it's knocked out of bounds by Frierson. One thing that Citadel does, they play consistently at this at this pace, and again, with a lot of teams, it wears them out. But again, you see by that Terrence Mann block steal right there that uh, Florida State's pretty, uh, they, they seem like they're ready to go tonight. There's Leonard Hamilton, his 16th season at the helm in Tallahassee. Closing in on 300 wins 
as head coach at FSU. He's closing in on 500 wins overall. He had stops previously at University of Miami as Frierson checks out, also Oklahoma State, and at the NBA level for a year, too. Trent Forrest, a guy that Florida State's trying to get back on track offensively, was slowed with a knee issue early in the season. Knocked away, and now it's numbers in favor of the Citadel. Despite that, they cannot convert. So Florida State will set up its defense. Knowles with a big lead here, 13-26 to play first half. I think Trent Forrest is uh, – is one of the key parts and uh, components for this team this upcoming year. I mean, this young man, when he gets in the game, you start to notice where tempo picks up, ball doesn't stick as much, gets moving. I mean, a real, I mean, real good point guard, but also defends, rebounds. I mean, I think he's going to be a key component for this Florida State team once they get in the ACC play. Terrence Mann is doing it all so far today. Somehow the Citadel retained possession there. That's a good mid-range floater, 18-7. So maybe settling in a little bit here. There's that pass to the middle as P.J. Savoy is on the floor now for Florida State. Another three, and that's the third one launched by M.J. Walker. Been off to a good start this year, but not tonight as he's misfired from beyond the arc. will stay with the Seminoles. MJ Walker, the 12th McDonald's All-American in Florida State history. From Jonesboro, Georgia, as Terrence Mann will get a well-deserved breather. He's got eight points, a couple of boards. Perfect from the floor. Kofer back out there. P.J. Savoy. Put back is up and again. Good by Fiondo Cabangeli. Fiondo this past uh, year, red shirt guy coming back his red shirt freshman year, made, mo made great use of his red shirt gear. Dropped about 20 pounds, worked on his athleticism, and again, guy who's uh, been actually a huge surprise, I believe, for the Seminoles so far this year. Well, that's not insignificant, especially with the injury to Chris Kumaji right now. He's going to be out for a little while. That foul off the ball on P.J. Savoy. Checking out Kalen Harris. Trigger into the backcourt. Florida State got out to a 12-zip lead. They've made that hold up, although that'll cut it down to 10 as Tariq Simmons, that's the three. That time, MJ Walker with a little bit of a fresh mistake on the dribble drive, stunned it a little bit too much. And that little stunt led to a led up to a little bit more contested shot that time. Kofer with a spin move and Florida State just cleaning up the glass and good position and that's pretty easy for Kevin Gelly. Skip pass, open three and off the mark and now we'll have a foul on Simmons. Incidental contact as he was fighting for the rebound, but the right call there. Knowles open on a 12-0 run. They still lead by 12 as we approach the midpoint of half number one. The home floor of the Florida State Seminoles. The Knowles unblemished thus far, leading 22 to 10. Let's check in once again with the third member of our team, Catherine Phillips. Catherine. Well, you guys may remember the Boom Squad from last year, the group of guys who pride themselves in being able to come off Florida State's bench and have as much of an impact in the game as the starting five did. Well, this team wanted to keep that same mentality and that same depth going into the season. So take a look at their distribution of minutes. Terrence Mann leading the way, averaging 29 per game. Behind him, 10 different guys averaging between 9 and 25 minutes per game. And C.J. Walker tells me their goal is to wear their opponents down. So look for them tonight, utilizing multiple different sets of five, trying to save their legs, throw off that Cigadel defense. Guys. Thanks, Catherine. That boom squad was integral in Florida State's terrific season a year ago. And Adrian Leonard has always had a, had a deep bench, and he's always gone deep into that bench, especially this part of the season. 
Ab he absolutely has. And I think one of the things that, uh, that coaches always pride themselves on is he wanted to play 10 to 11 guys deep. And what's happened is a little bit different, though, that's from a Leonard Hammer basketball team is last year's boom squad was offensively. Normally he would come with five, and those five guys defensively would take it to a new level. But offensively, that's a little bit different over these last couple of years as they've kind of gone away from the, the traditional big, you know, 6'11", four, man. Now they're going more how the game is going to that stretch four and really has picked up the pace. I think it's been a good adjustment for the Knowles. Well, one of the things that's uh, been a change, too, is that the, 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 the offensive – skill of some of the players that they've brought in has been at a higher level when you look at a Malik Beasley and a Dwayne Bacon and then a Jonathan Isaac and now you got an MJ Walker who's got the ball in his hands right now. So it's allowed him to make that switch a little bit more too. Yes, the game, you know, it really started to change when LeBron James went to Miami and the basketball starting to slowly become more of a positionless type of game where, you know, uh, back when I was playing, your four and five men really weren't perimeter oriented. You had a few guys here and there. But now it's really one through five. You got to be able to shoot, pass, and dribble. That's a pretty shot from Trent Forrest from Chipley, Florida, where he scored over 3,100 points in his high school career. That's filling it up. Matt Frierson, never afraid to pull the trigger, does so there, and it's 24-13. Walker will draw the foul. MJ Walker from Jonesboro, Georgia. I mentioned he's a McDonald's All-American. Same high school as former Seminole great Tony Douglas. And has gotten off to a good start here early in his Florida State career. Yeah, it kind of reminds me a little bit of Malik Beasley. Kind of a guy, catch and shoot guy, can put it down and score. Maybe not as good of an athlete as Malik, but again, he's really settling in. Another McDonald's All-American. And Florida State's done a great job recruiting that that uh, Metro Atlanta area. Again, from Malik Beasley to now MJ Walker. I mean, Phil Kofer. And again, that a lot is a credit to Coach Ham and his um, ties uh, throughout the country, but also for Coach Charlton Young, who's a guy who really recruits the South really well. Savoy will sit down. Walker had a very nice tournament in Jamaica, made the Jamaica Classic All-Tournament team, had 22 points, including five triples in the game against Colorado State. Knocks down a couple of free throws, which is good to see. Florida State has not gotten to the line a whole lot this season. And I think some of that is just the fact that a lot of teams are, are packing the paint and, and really kind of getting the Seminoles to, to make and uh, shoot open jump shots. But, again, that's what they've been doing. So as the year goes on, as they continue to pack the paint, um, and they continue, teams are going to have to respect that uh, three-point. They should be able to get to the line a little bit more. Ryerson for three, off the mark, and this time an offensive rebound. And a reload, no good. Board cleared by FSU with authority, I might add, by Ike Obiagu. Love seeing that from the freshman. Many times freshmen be a little timid, be try to get a little timid, but that, but Ike right there had the elbows out wide, ready to go. He had those elbows sharpened. He was just <laughs> daring somebody to reach in. Good ball fake and down low, maybe too far underneath to do anything with it, except that. Find a teammate, set him up for the flush. Turnover will erase that three-point shot. Pretty good find. 15-point lead for Florida State, their biggest of the first half. Tough pass from Kofer, but Walker recovers. One thing that will be interesting as this game goes on, Citadel stays in this press as Florida State passes remaining crisp. Many times we start to get turnovers in that press, we start floating the basketball. Great pass. Terrence Mann's making it look easy tonight. Man, Terrence Mann reminds me so much of Jimmy Butler, just a guy who can just do a little bit of everything. Um, and he does some things really, really well. Pretty nice comparison for Florida State's junior and leading scorer, another triple up and in. They're not shooting a high percentage tonight, but that's their fourth made three. They're shooting 31% so far. I'm amazed. We are 12 minutes in this game. They've already got 13 threes up. This team averages uh, close to 35 threes a contest. Had a, had a high of 47 uh, early the first game of the year. 
Kofer more explosive than he appeared a year ago. Skies to grab that one. Out of high school, Phil Kofer was known to be a big-time athlete. Those injuries kind of slowed him down a little bit, but it's great to see him back at full go. Florida State will answer with the three. Ten three-point attempts for Florida State already this year, this game, too. Make it 11. That was a nice job by Kofer to hang and grab that. He was fouled. Florida State getting good balance, doing a nice job offensively and defensively. Up 33-16. The seminal sound part of the atmosphere here at the Donald L. Tucker Center. Florida State with a big lead here early on, and the size has given the Citadel some fits so far. Florida State with a 20-2 advantage in the paint. And we mentioned at the top, this is one of the smallest teams in the country against one of the biggest teams in the country. It truly is a David and Goliath type of uh, matchup tonight. But one thing that... Uh, the Florida State was concerned with coming into this game was actually rebounding. And the reason why is because when you shoot long shots, there are long rebounds. And so one of the things I know they had a point of emphasis of was being able to block out and being able to get to that glass because they were worried about long rebounds tonight. And Florida State's done a pretty good job so far. Yeah, they have the rebounding edge 17 to 11 right now. And they have limited the Citadel for the most part to just one and done opportunities there into the floor. Substitution Kofer will check out. We're going to think Florida State's uh, done well so far. Also, with a team like Citadel, who wants to get a lot of shots up early, is really they've done a great job of, of guarding the drive. Because how Citadel really works, they go out of a horn set sometimes, sometimes a high ball screen set, and they just want to get that ball to the paint and then spray it around uh, for open threes. So Florida State's done a good job on that initial uh, defense. Skip pass for Mann. And then right back, wow. That would have been a significant highlight of the night had that one gone down. Instead, Man, it's a turnover. I don't know if Vince Carter in his prime could have got that one. That was a, <laughs> that was a pretty high pass that time. As pretty as it looked, back the other way, and the Citadel able to convert on the turnover. Again, one thing that Florida State has to continue to work on is that as they get leads like this, to continue to keep their foot on the gas. Happened uh, the other night when they played Kennesaw State, they started to slow down a little bit, and they got to keep their foot on the gas, keep mentally locked into the game. Having Gelly with a long jump shot that's no good. Now we got a hack underneath. It's going to go against Florida State. Angola picks up his second. I'm going to be interested to see if Florida State can continue to turn up that pressure. Eight turnovers so far um, for the Citadel. And again, same thing happened early on the other night against uh, Kennesaw State, and then finally starting to wear down a little bit. But I hope Florida State can continue to keep that pressure up on him. Simmons misfires on the first one. Second leading scorer on the team. And 47% on triples coming in. Wholesale changes for Florida State. Angola and Walker will sit down. Good job by Florida State to corral that ball. Rob Johnson was sort of lurking around there, almost grabbed that free ball, but FSU corrals it instead. Trent Forrest gets mugged on his way to the rim. We'll get an opportunity at the stripe. One thing that I like what Trent Forrest did that time is he got his he got the ball inside to the paint on that drive right there. Took it hard to the paint, got fouled really hard. But again, against the zone, what you don't want to do is to stand on the perimeter, just pass the ball around. You got to get dribble penetration. You got to uh, make the defense move with pass fakes and shot fakes. So Forrest to the stripe. That foul was on Rob Johnson. Johnson's a freshman out of Dillard High School in the Fort Lauderdale area, which means he was a teammate of Raekwon Gray, who's on this Florida State roster. We haven't seen him play yet this season. 
Dillard's a high school that is known for producing uh, big-time basketball players. It seemed like every other year, Dillard's coming out with a few Division One basketball players. Great pedigree, the guy's going down there. As a guy who grew up in Broward County, I can attest that is a true <laughs> statement. 36-18. Good feed. Yes, great pass. Good half-court execution there for Citadel. One thing with this pressure, when you've got so many guys that can handle the basketball, that's not going to hurt. It's a nice, nice move. Guy who didn't play last year, made the most of his redshirt season. Talk about a catch and shoot. Wow. Frierson wow. again. Frierson's range, as soon as he entered Leon County, his range is there. Reminds me of P.J. Savoy type of uh, I, green light. I was just going to say that uh, here's Walker, and that's leaning left the whole way, so his shot not there tonight. We've got a foul in the scrum for the rebound. Maybe at halftime we can just have a three-point contest between <laughs> Frierson and Savoy. Or after the game, we'll just line them up and let them go. See who can make one from the deepest. I mean, it's like you cross half court, it is ready to go. A little bit of an arm lock there, I think. From Quason Williams is what they call him. Correction, Citadel foul number two. Williams is first. So here's Fiondu, Cabin Galey. 7-3 wingspan, had 15 points against Fordham. He was truly a diamond in the rough that Florida State found. Um, again, uh, Coach Dennis Gates uh, was out there recruiting on the recruiting trail and, and then kind of stumbled upon uh, Fiondu, and they really saw what he could be. And so he's truly uh, panned out, and I think he's going to be uh, a great one for the Knowles. The Leonard Hamilton and his staff have – made careers out of turning over rocks and finding some prospects. Maybe they're not quite as polished as uh, what some of the Blue Blood programs get, but they've found more than a few that have gone on to some pretty nice careers. They absolutely have. I'm reminded of uh, one of the old great Al Thornton they found there in Perry, Georgia. And again, I think when you're building a program, you know, you got to do that. You got to turn over every rock. But again, that's a testament to their staff of having been in the game for such a long time and just having great relationships that, uh, that people around really want to try to help you. And they try to let you know when there's players out there. And so, again, a testament to Coach Ham and his staff over the years of uh, just building great relationships and uh, working the trail. Foul was on Walker as this free throw is up and in. Preston Parks, all he did was lead the SOCON in scoring, the first freshman to do so since a guy named Steph Curry. So I think that'll get some people's attention. Absolutely. Again, Preston Parks doing a good job. A lefty out here, but Florida State's done a good job so far. The guy who's leading at 14, almost 15 points a game, they've held him to four so far. Again, Florida State takes pride in making the stop of the other team's best player. There's Terrence Mann finding his way into double figures. Good hustle from Trent Forrest. Ten points for Mann and uh, very efficient. He's one of the top field goal percentage shooters in the history of the Florida State program, so not surprising to see him four for five. Absolutely. Again, one thing about Terrence Mann, he's a student of the game. The guy's consistently watching. Again, when you are a student of the game, and again, it's no shock the fact of being a coach's kid that he's that. But when you watch enough film, you begin to figure out how to get shots and how to be efficient within the context of the, uh, the offense. Because, again, many guys can score the basketball, but it takes something. It takes a special type of player, a guy who really studies the game and know how to score within their system they play in. Parks pulls the trigger and <laughs> rattles it home. Why I thought, not? I thought the bank should close after Thanksgiving. It's a Black Friday special. <laughs> 14 point edge for Florida State. There's Mann for three. If Mann can consistently knock that down, 
that adds a whole other dimension to his game. One thing I one thing I think does help Florida State right now is Terrence Mann actually taking that shot last year. That would have been a time where he was shot fake, put it down, and again as the year went on, the teams just stopped closing. It had a short close out on him, but him shooting that basketball is a really important thing for the Knowles this year. Yeah, it makes you have to defend everybody out on the floor. 42-28, Knowles with a comfortable cushion. The Heisman Trophy presentation, Saturday at 8 on ESPN. Nope. Yeah. Ain't no stopping. Nope. Steph Curry with the shot. Yeah. Ain't nobody better than my team. Nope. Money like Draymond Green. Yeah. Everybody say Warriors. Warriors. Welcome back, Tom Block. Adrian Crawford, Catherine Phillips with you tonight from Tallahassee. Knowles leading big, and of course, Black Friday means uh, football as well. Miami upset earlier today, and UCF in a thriller over USF stays unbeaten. Goes to a conference championship game next week. Here the Knowles grab the loose ball. So boy for three. Big time shot right there by P.J. Savoy. He's kind of been struggling a little bit this game, but again, he's the type of guy, you get him going, he makes one that could lead to three or four. Well, like you say, uh, his, his range is when he parks his car behind the Tucker Center. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Has struggled a little bit by his standards. This year it was about this time a year ago when he, he got into some action, and I think he had five or six triples in one game. And everybody said, whoa, look at this guy shoot. Yeah, he was crucial last year in a couple of those, a few games last year for the Seminoles. And again, as this year comes on, one thing that he will not do is have a will have the element of surprise with teams. They know who he is, and, and they're going to run him off that line. Citadel out hustling Florida State. we got a Seminole tripped up. MJ Walker. I didn't see what happened to him. He turned it over on one end, hustled to get back, and still down. Crowd grows quiet. That is a guy with a very bright future and I'm not sure what he injured there, but he's in a lot of pain right now. Oh, he turned his right ankle pretty significantly there is what that was. You can see he can't put much weight on that at all as he has helped off. And so a day that starts with the news that Chris Kamaji is out indefinitely goes from bad to worse for Florida State as their prized freshman hobbles off. And we'll hope that that is a sprain and not much more. But he definitely rolled that pretty good. Yeah, absolutely. One thing is that Florida State, you know, early in the year, you're going, you're kind of grinding it out with those, uh, you know, long practice, things like that. So, again, sometimes you have those little injuries, and again, something like that, again, hopefully won't be something that he's out for a significant time. Trent Forrest draws the contact and the foul with 2.44 to play here in the first half. So Forrest back to the stripe. Really good on-ball defender. Struggling with his confidence a little bit offensively. Going back to the point we discussed earlier, they'd like to see him get on track. Yeah, one of the things Trent Forrest, uh, you know, that I was able to witness is some coming summer. He spent a lot of time in the gym. That's one thing about this group is that they got a lot of guys committed to getting better. I uh, spent a lot of time with Coach Stan Jones and really working on shooting the basketball. And again, you can even see it from his free throws, his form. I mean, he is the guy who has, has gotten better, which is amazing. A guy who really wasn't a great shooter in high school, scoring 3,100 points, shows you a type of basketball player that he is. 
shot no good, and the board wiped clean by Florida State. It's a good find from Walker to Savoy. A little too strong for P.J., but a good look nevertheless. One thing I'm noticing a little bit with P.J. Savoy, I don't know if he's gotten a little bit of a, a knee injury or something, but seems like not to get a lot of lift right now in his jump shot. And again, legs are everything when it comes to shooting the basketball. Terrence Mann wanted the hack. He didn't get it. He'll have to settle for the hoop. Mann leading Florida State in this game. Double figures, 12 points. Timeout, Citadel, 30 seconds. Citadel will take a timeout. Duger Bauckham's team has fallen behind by 19. He's a guy who's looking at his third year with the Citadel, spent 10 years at VMI, and really a Paul Westhead philosophy in terms of pulling the trigger, pushing it. Had to come up with something at a, at a military school or at a place like the Citadel that's a little different maybe than what other programs are doing to try and draw some recruits in. Yeah, absolutely. Kind of reminds me a little bit, a little different style, but kind of reminds me when a form, former Florida State assistant Andy Enfield went to Florida Gulf Coast and down there and really the architect of Dunk City where they spread it out, a lot of ball screen, a lot of lobs, and getting created a coach. I think when you're at a, a low major school, you got to do little things like that to build, like you said, to get recruits, but also to build a fan base. And, again, this is an exciting brand of basketball. And, um, and again, I think they're doing a great job there with Citadel. Florida State basketball up 19 now. The alley -oop. Oh, and Forrest couldn't finish. Great, uh, great out of bounds underneath play they just ran. Well, nobody's smiling now, but they'll rib them a little bit in the film session later, <laughs> provided they hold on to win this game. Especially, uh, especially <laughs> C.J. Walker. Said you're hurting my assist total there. Yeah, that's it. Under thing, two minutes to play first half. One thing about this group that Florida State has in right now, you can switch one through five. And again, which is a great thing with a team that pushes up and down on any ball screen, any movement, you can switch almost all screens. Because again, all five guys out here can go all five positions. So this is kind of a bodes well for the Florida State Seminoles with this group in. Yeah, this is a gr group that can run. Good look. Najdawi from Midlothian, Virginia. Man, the top scorer for Florida State, the only player in double figures for the Knowles at this point. Tie up, and the ball will go over to the Bulldogs. Freshman Tariq Simmons already with uh, with already doing a really good job out here. Again, second leading scorer. He's got eight points. Again, got to continue to get him and Parks going. Frierson to trigger it in for the Bulldogs, and Savoy will chase him around right now. We're under a minute to play. Knowles have done a good job on Parks. And one. Almost got that shot to go down. Savoy picks up his second foul. Frierson will have some freebies. He is from Laurel, Maryland. One thing I like about this Frierson kid is, man, Moving without the ball, but a crafty guy, I mean, can get it. I mean, again, it's a different than just shooting the basketball, but he is getting up some good shot attempts and, again, using his body that time. They ran kind of misdirection, brought him back off a pin down screen, and, and man, he was able to get into the body and get, get a really good three shots here. Makes the free throws. Career 37% three-point shooter, but that uh, that average has jumped significantly here early in uh, in this year. Shot 36% a year ago and 49% coming in this year, albeit a small sample size, but that's a pretty healthy jump. 
FSU fortunate to get that back. 14 point difference, man. And underneath, Kofor make it worse. See, games like this is where this is a great, not so much even, it's a great physical test, but also a great mental test for Florida State is that can they consistently stay locked into the game plan? Because when you get through the ACC season, that's going to be key when you're playing against the Dukes and the Carolinas, is can you mentally stay locked into your game plan? Knowles can basically play for the last shot here. There's a slight differential, and so that's what C.J. Walker's doing is he'll bleed the clock. FSU will go to work. Now Kofer goes down, and he's hurt. Wow, what a tumble. This is truly turning into Black Friday for FSU. Absolutely. He'll get up and stay in, but uh, he's going to be a little sore tomorrow on that fall. Yeah, you see Coach Stan Jones over talking to freshman Wyatt Wilkes because that was a, a ill-advised shot. I mean, you got one, I mean, again, you get the last shot in the shot clock, and then again, you, you hoist the shot up with about eight seconds to go, and again, leads to that. Just didn't get to brace that fall whatsoever. And again, another reason why it being a little last shot going into the half is the fact that with a team like Citadel, who again they're trying to get shots up within three to five seconds. I mean, six. I mean, five point nine seconds for Citadel is like a lifetime for them in the way that they play. And to your point, good look at the horn. It's off the mark. Florida State with the lead at intermission, 52 to 35. Knowles got a 12-zip start, have led throughout. Have seen a couple of key players, though, go down. MJ Walker with a significant ankle, and Phil Cofer hopefully shakes off that tumble. Coach Leonard Hamilton right now with our Catherine Phillips. KP. Coach Terrence Mann off to yet another hot start. What are you liking from him on offense? Well, to be very honest with you, I've been kind of looking at the, the overall offense. Terrence got a lot of tip-ins and putbacks, and I thought he hit a couple of jump shots. Uh, against a team like this, though, you got to continue to keep executing. We, we're playing fairly well, but we still have not gotten away from it. This uh, team like this who shoots the ball with 10 seconds or less in the shot clock, and they shoot the ball as well, then they're always dangerous. We just got to keep playing. Yeah, you held that high-tempo offense down to 35. How do you continue to slow them in the second? Well, we got to continue to keep defending. Uh, we, we've been very fortunate to miss some pretty wide open shots. Uh, this is a very dangerous team that's given us a, a tremendous test. Thank you, Coach. Thank you, Catherine. They're shooting 33% from beyond the arc. Halftime in Tallahassee. Back to the Tucker Center after this. Intermission at the Tucker Center, Florida State, with a comfortable lead over the Citadel, 52-35. to And as the halftime festivities continue, we take you to part two of Jam with Ham. Over the roar of an 80s music mashup, an excited crowd awaits. Through an aisle of cheerleaders and shaking pom-poms, the competitors file onto the court. Adding to the fun atmosphere, one lucky FSU student had the chance to go head to head with the players in a three point shootout. Like, as soon as I turned around, like, look at the crowd, he was just like looking at me with like, big eyes. I was like, oh, snap. And I just picked him, like, he was jumping, he was going crazy. So I just decided to pick him. Definitely made it more exciting for me getting to like say, like, oh, like, I shot against CJ Walker. Like, during the season, that would be cool to say, like, I played against him in the three point shootout and stuff. And it just makes you feel more involved and more a part of, like, kind of what's going on and stuff. So that was really exciting for me. But the night wouldn't be complete without the highly anticipated dunk contest featuring one special guest judge behind the table. I was definitely impressed. Some of the guys were doing stuff they couldn't do last year. So I don't know what happened when I left. I don't know why they didn't do that to me, but I was very impressed. Well, there's no doubt that this bunch has a great attitude. They have great chemistry. 
and they work very, very hard. They like each other. And the, the strength of our team is the quality of our depth. Our guys really shared a lot of playing time. And they understand clearly that, that uh, as we move into the, the, this upcoming season, that we need to have that same level of attitude, togetherness, and chemistry. Between staying alive and earning a little R-E-S-P-E-C-T, the guys know this season is sure to be a hit. I'm Heather Merritt for Seminole Sports Magazine. Florida State up big over the Citadel as we welcome you back. Intermission in Tallahassee. Tom Block and Adrian Crawford back with you. And you'd look at that score and think Florida State would be pleased across the board. But there, there's plenty to find fault with. They didn't shoot particularly well behind the arc, Florida State. And Citadel team is capable of making a run, as Leonard Hamilton pointed out on his way off the floor at halftime. Absolutely. With a team that just shoots the ball at such a high volume, again, within the first five seconds of the shot clock, I mean, again, they've got plenty of firepower to get right back into this ball game. Take a look at the uh, first half highlights here. We knew coming in that the Citadel would chuck it up. They did that, but Florida State got out to a 12-0 start. Big time layup right there by C.J. Walker. Again, putting pressure on the Citadel early on in the ball game. Bill Cofer has looked strong in this his senior season. But outside, three balls, six of them drilled by the Citadel. Terrence Mann has been leading the way for Florida State, leads all scorers with 13 points. What do you want to see more of if you're Florida State? As they come out here in the second half. Again, with a comfortable lead, but you've already seen a couple guys go down with uh, at least one guy go down with injury. We'll have to see how Cooper is. What does Leonard Hamilton want to see out of his team here in the second half? I think what he's really looking for is can this team mentally stay in the game? These games are just all about the mental preparation because, again, where it was Kennesaw State, um, again, this team like Citadel, is that can you continue to stick with your game plan, stick with your principles throughout the game? Because, again, you sometimes you start to wane, you get a little bit tired, and so these guys mentally have to stay locked in because when you play against the, the big-time teams in the ACC, that's when it really counts. Knowles making their way back out onto the hardwood. We'll get to second-half action. When we come back to the Tucker Center in Tallahassee. Welcome back, Tom Block, Adrian Crawford, Catherine Phillips, our entire crew. Thanks for joining us tonight. Florida State with a 52-35 lead over the Citadel here at the Tucker Center. Take a look at the first half stats. What sticks out to you? I think the one thing that sits out to me the most is Florida State, again, rebounding 24 to 19. Again, though they are the biggest team, like we said earlier, long shots, long rebounds. They've done a good job there. But also the fact that Florida State shots are only 24% from the three-point line. Again, I know that's this year they want to push that up between that 35 and 40% range. Still the Seminoles controlling the boards and controlling the game thus far, being paced by Terrence Mann who has 13 points, and Frierson on the other side has been lethal as we knew he would be from beyond the arc. Yes, Matt Frierson again has come out and he has shot the ball really well, but again, not only just shooting the ball well, but just being able to get shots off against Florida State Lynch shows his craftiness and shows the type of player he is. Terrence Mann at this point now shooting 72% from the field this season. So continues his torrid pace to start this season. Leonard Hamilton and Duger Bauckham with some final words for their troops as we get set for the second half of play. <laughs> Phil Kofer was out in the layup line and is out there to start the second half, so that's a good sign after he took that fall late in the first half. Appears to be all right as we peer at our head coaches and they engage in the basketball game, Florida State with the first possession here in our second half. Again, these first five minutes are crucial uh, for any team when you're up 17 to continue to stay locked in. Good start for Florida State. Brian Angola has got a nice stroke for Florida State and answering the other way, Galen Harris. Matching three for three here to start. Man ups not to take that one. Oh, 
One thing that starts to happen, I noticed uh, the last couple games with Florida State, is that sometimes with Terrence Mann and C.J. Walker, that ball can begin to stick in their hands. And, again, Florida State's really good when that ball's popping. And so I know that's something that uh, the coaches have been emphasizing with these guys on is making sure that ball's not sticking in their hands. So defense moves. That time it got stuck and Kofor started a move and then the pass came. Here's a deflection and a knockaway of steal for Florida State. Angola with a long pass. Nice catch by Walker. He gets to the rim, and the lefty gets it to go down. Three left-handed players on this Florida State team, including C.J. Walker. Quick trigger the other way off the front of the iron, no good. And Florida State grabs the board. The whistle will go against FSU. One thing Florida State's got to continue to lock in and focus on is when that ball's up and train. Once they score, it's getting back. Because Citadel's not stopping. They're not waiting. They're going to be blowing that ball up the floor, getting right to it. So they got to make sure the transition defense Again, stay secure. Good block. Angola now pushes it. That's a good find underneath and a good block from the Citadel. Both ends, some good defense. Hayden Brown knocks that out of Kofor's hands as he went up. Get have been really impressed with this Citadel basketball club. Again, being one of the smallest teams in the country. But again, how they are rebounding the basketball against a very lengthy Florida State team, but also defensively get a couple blocks. But also, again, they're making it, they're contesting a lot of shots here against Florida State. So again, very impressed with this group. Another three for Florida State. It is drained yet again. And Gola, red hot. And that'll help Florida State's percentage as they knock down the first two here in the second half. Gopher gets away with a reach in, but the trigger pulled. And Brown knocks home the three. He's 46% on threes, unlimited attempts this year. Got to be a fun offense to play in. Yeah, absolutely it is, because again, when you're playing with that type of confidence and really not worried about if I'm going to get pulled down or not, the type of shots, again, it allows you to just kind of free up and again, allows you to shoot the ball really well. Knocked out of bounds there, Kofer. Handling the basketball, and the Citadel will take that. Got the knockaway. One thing you can see Florida State really focusing on right now is just really helping, you know, helping Ike, uh, number 12, really helping him try to figure out this game and really be able to have matchups and things like that. Because, again, with a team where all five guys can step out and shoot the ball, kind of puts him at a disadvantage. But, again, this young freshman getting valuable, valuable experience right now early on in the year. It's going to be very helpful for him later on in the ACC play. Shot altered. Loose ball fought for, won by the Citadel. What a shot clock violation. Shot clock violation. And that's something that uh, has not been a factor so far tonight, the shot clock. <laughs> You could have just turned that thing off and let us play. Absolutely. The one thing, again, you saw freshman Ike Obiagu doing such a wonderful job that time, walling up inside in the post. And, again, this Florida State coaching staff has raved about defensively how good he is, thinking he could be one of the best uh, defensive bigs that's ever come through here um, in the Leonard Hamilton era, which is saying a lot with the likes of Bernard James and others. Bernard James was a shot-blocking force for Florida State when he was here. And one. How about that? That's a score. I didn't think he had much of a look there at all, but Mann gets it to float home. Again, great job by time by Terrence Mann attacking the basketball, getting the floater up at the rim. Terrence Mann's career high 22 points against Virginia Tech last year. Got 15 in this game. Leaves that one a little bit short. Biggest lead of the evening for Florida State, however. Behind the back dribble for Parks. And then another three is up and good for Matt Frierson. I tell you what, when Matt Frierson, if I was playing pickup basketball, he is my first pick because this guy can shoot the rock. Back the other way, man. You know, it's a different role for Mann this year with an opportunity to be more of a primary scorer as there he goes again. Compared to last year when you had Bacon and XRM and Jonathan Isaac. Yeah. You know, and Mann was really the fourth option offensively at any time. Now a different deal. Whoa!
Talk about undercutting a defender, and uh, he's okay. Yeah, that thing this year. That was Rob Johnson who uh, backed up and took out Ike Obiagu there. Obiagu okay. Freshman from Nigeria. I saw him about 2 o'clock this afternoon with Stan Jones at the free throw line for 30 minutes working on free throws. I tell you what, man, when you get these kids again, Ike is, uh, you know, we're only playing basketball for a few years. And again, one of the one of the things that uh, you notice with a lot of mainly African big men is sometimes it takes them a minute to get that touch and that feel um, for being able to shoot. And so, again, sometimes struggling. But this kid has really put a lot of time and effort. He's going to continue to keep getting better at it. Shoots a one-handed free throw, which is unorthodox to say the least. One of the reasons why he's doing that is because early on when he was shooting the basketball, he was what we call thumb the basketball a lot, where he would have his, his guide hand on it, and he really was kind of shooting it with both hands where he's kind of putting side spin on it. So, again, I know Coach Dan Jones, again, one of the best, I mean, basketball minds out there has really been working with him on trying to get that guide hand off the ball. There's a lane violation in there, and guide hand not on the ball, and he third time the charm. That's it. There's Stan Jones, who's been, uh, well, I guess in this case, he's the left-hand man for Leonard based on the way they're sitting there. But he's been the right-hand man for Coach Hamilton for an awful lot of years, including uh, his days at the University of Miami before he even got to FSU. Absolutely. Stan Jones, again, I've been around college basketball my entire life, and I can honestly say Stan Jones is one of the best basketball minds I've ever been around. Good job again, Kevin Gelly with the block shot right there, Florida State. The 21 point lead. Well, he can't miss at this point. Ryan Angola. I like to call him the Colombian Flash. He gets in there and gets it done. Another basket. I mean, nine points so far in the first five minutes of this half by Brian. Got four triples in this game. It's become the Brian Angola show here for Florida State. As the veteran is heating up from outside the arc. Knowles lead it big. It's been the Brian Angola show here in the second half. Knowles up by 24. He has matched his career high with four three-pointers, including three triples in this half alone. Gunning for another one. It's out of bounds, though, to the Citadel here. There is Angola, the senior for Florida State. Was a JUCO All-American before arriving at FSU last year. One of the things that he's uh, really improved on this year is, again, Working with him shooting the basketball, his legs again, great back. You watch great jump shooters; they're always jumping up, holding their foul through, sticking their landing. Last year, he shot a lot of off-balance threes, but this year, you're noticing a noticeable difference in him jumping up, sticking that landing, shooting the basketball, and he's shooting at a higher clip this year. Najdawi with that triple, and the Citadel is now shooting 40% on threes in this game, 10 for 25. Man gives it up, and that's an easy two. Kevin Gelly. So Coach Ham will not be happy about the 40%, which just went higher than that. Mark from beyond the arcs, Quason Williams connects. And it's a 20-point lead, but 11 for 26 is not what you want to see from the opposition. Especially on plays like that, again, you know, you saw the uh, the reach and the um, the reach on the steal by Cobb and Gelly, which Mitch's, which 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 he missed, which allowed him uh, uh, Citadel to drive the ball to kick out to knock down a three again. They got to stop dribble penetration. That's the point Leonard Hamilton's expressing to his team right now, even though they're up 20. We'll step aside. Welcome back. 14:42 to play. We've been talking about Brian Angola and his. Hot start here in the second half. Sixth man of the year for the Seminoles a year ago, born in Columbia. 
averaging 10 points per game this season, 12 points in tonight's game. And you know, he's, he can be an unsung guy for Florida State. Uh, I say that, I guess, because P.J. Savoy, because of the way he burst on the scene last year, he got the reputation as being the three-point assassin. But at the end of the year, Angola had the better percentage from beyond the arc. Absolutely. And the thing that I, I really do like about Brian is the fact that he comes in and he gives this team a lot of energy. Again, plays with a lot of passion. And again, you can tell that this game really matters to him. And so I think he truly is, as they say, the heart and soul of this basketball team. He's going to be... It's going to be a huge part this year for the Seminole basketball team because they're going to have some success in um, in regular season and in postseason play. Man's jump shot no good. Not real good ball movement, that possession for Florida State. Here a knockaway, though, and a steal, and that's Brian Angola. Gets bottled up, finds some help from C.J. Walker. And we'll shoot another. And there it is, a new career best for Angola with five triples tonight. It's closing in on a career high, by the way, too, which is at 17, so one more triple. I have a new mark. In and out, and the gold jerseys will clear the boards. Man trying to find somebody, but could not, so he'll pull the trigger himself. Leaves it short. C.J. Walker will be whistled for this foul. Tariq Simmons will get some free throws. He helped his high school to a 2A state title as a junior. He is from Columbia. Much of this roster for the Citadels from South Carolina. Well, maybe not much. About half the roster from the state of South Carolina. Entering Simmons again. Second lead scorer on this ball club. Guys having a little bit over 11 points a game. Doing a great job so far tonight. Walker and Mann will sit down. Substitutions the other way, too. Florida State with a 20-plus point cushion much of this second half here. And the board pulled down by Kevin Gilly. Brandon Allen out there for Florida State now. This fire from Savoy again, and some bodies get tangled up. Whistle sounds. We'll have a foul on FSU. Webster had hit the floor. He got tangled up with Kevin Gilly. One thing I'll be interested in right now is to see, you know, Brian Angola uh, right here guarding Frierson again, taking it upon himself again to try to see if he can get a stop, a guy who's been doing really well. Again, that's one thing about this Florida State basketball team. They truly do take pride on the defense been on the floor. I think it's going to be so crucial for them as they continue to go throughout this year. Why not one more? Crashing the boards hard. Kevin Galley gets it. He's in double figures. End to end action for Kevin Galley. He commits the foul. Redshirt freshman from Ontario, Canada. Free throws to come for the Citadel. Knowles on cruise control tonight. 77 to 52. Twenty-five point cushion for Florida State. The Knowles playing without Chris Kumaji, who is uh, out indefinitely. You see him in the middle of the pack there, and also MJ Walker went down earlier this game, rolled his right ankle, and you can see there he is on the bench with ice on it. We're told that it's maybe not as bad as what it looked like. Yep. 
which that's easy to say right now. It won't feel as good tomorrow, I'm sure, but they're going to keep it iced. And I, I would suspect, I don't know this, that probably means that they took x-rays and everything came back okay. And, again, I don't know that. Yeah. But he's sitting on the bench right now, so that's a – that's a good sign. It's better than if he's not sitting on the bench right now. I'll just say that. Absolutely. It's always a good sign to see a guy right back out there with his team again, good meaning it's probably not as serious as, as we first, uh, first thought it would be. Trent Forrest banks that in. Ryerson once more. Look at that. He's human. He missed one. <laughs> Angola lost the handle, and now underneath finds Kofer. Kofer's been quiet this half. Yeah, another guy that uh, took a tumble in the first half that looked like it uh, might be something significant. Turned out it wasn't, and Kofer end-to-end. -end. He gets the block, and here's Forrest. Great pass. Wow. That's quite a sequence right there. Kofer at both ends, three plays in a row. Look at Trent Forrest that time, makes the behind-the-back pass, the assist, then comes down and gets a steal with it. And again, great effort, great hustle by the sophomore guard. Well, I know they want to get Forrest going. That's a pretty nifty play. Gets the block on one end and uh, reward the big guy, right? You always reward the big fellow when he runs. Again, especially Phil Kofer gets a big-time block on the glass that time, sprinting to the floor. And like I said, we tell players all the time, you definitely reward your big fellow when he runs. It's early in this season, but – it's clear to me that he does look like he's much closer to 100% or maybe at 100% compared to last year when uh, he didn't look as athletic as what we've seen already in the early going here. Brandon Allen for three. No good, but Savoy gets the putback. That's one of the guys I think Florida State really wants to try to see get going is Brandon Allen. I think he gives you another run on the 11th guy who can go. One thing that they talk a lot about about Brandon Allen, his, his defensive IQ, he's, again, one of the guys who grades really high defensively knows the right spots to be in. Again, if they can get a guy like him making shots, he adds to the value of this Florida State basketball team where they can continue to get uh, as they go deeper and deeper throughout the uh, year. We've still got 10.35 to play in this game, and Florida State's at 85 points and counting. Make it 88. Make it another triple for Brian Angola, and that's a career high now for Angola with 18 points in this one. And another, this time P.J. Again, though, P.J. Savoy right now, two for ten for the game. One thing he wants to try to work on as this game's going on is can you build a little bit more confidence going into the next one. Trent Forrest with a block shot in there. There's an offensive board, and Forrest will get called for the foul on the reach-in. But he's tough on ball, the defender. I mean, he, he's relentless, too. He is. He's one of those guys, again, he's going to do as, at the point guard spot. He kind of gives you a little bit of everything. Reminds me of an old school guy. He's played for Milwaukee Bucks by the name of Sidney Moncrief. Guy who could defend. I mean, he could. You're not I mean, that old, Adrian. You're going real old school <laughs> here. Well, I said Sidney Moncrief went to my high school up in uh, Ohio, in uh, Barbara, in Ohio, right outside of Akron. So, again, I'm um, not sorry, uh, Alvin Robertson went there with us. But Sidney Moncrief was his backcourt teammate. But, again, he's a guy who. Uh, so Trent Forrest reminds me of guys who does a little bit of all, get rebounds, defends, um, and then can get to the basket. P.J. found the same spot on the floor, was trying to make that a streak, but uh, off the mark, two of eight on triples. And his shot's been just a little bit off here in the early part of the season. Yeah. And, again, I see him out there, you know, we're talking about a little bit at the break, you know, with the knee sleeve on and everything. I don't know if he's gotten a little bit of problems a little bit you know, kind of banged up because, again, as the beginning of the year, a lot of long practices, things like that, these guys tend to get a little bit banged up. And so that can affect your shot because, again, how you land, again, great jump shooters, guys like Kevin Durant, guys like Steph Curry, they're guys who really jump, land, stick their landing, get off the floor, and that's really crucial. Your legs are crucial when you're shooting jump shots. And so hopefully CJ can get a little bit healed up and, again, get himself going a little bit better. A lot of dribbling from Tariq Simmons and the shot – off the mark. Look at the big fella running the floor. Here's P.J. again. Kevin Gailey misses the layup inside, but Florida State gets it right back. Man has had a nice night. 19 points, six assists, six boards. 
and only one turnover. Again, he is this guy who can really do it all, and he has been doing it all tonight. Trent Forrest off the glass. You know, he may not be a shooter, but he's a scorer when he goes to the rim. Yeah, again, Trent Forrest is, I think these are, uh, a guy had an injury early on in the year, a little bone bruise to his knee, and so getting him back going um, has been, uh, you know, last night the Kennesaw State game, and then tonight is really, a, it's going to be helpful for this ball club as they continue to go forward. Because, again, he is a guy who can be able to break you down defensively, be able to get to the rim again, just right there, high finish off the glass. And, and he's going to have to be a guy this year that he's going to have to score the ball for this Florida State basketball team. Shot rattled home. Frierson will come back in. 29 three-point attempts for the Citadel and for Florida State. Knowles 10 for 29. The Bulldogs 11 for 29. One thing amazing about Common Gelly is the fact that if his 7-3 wingspan I mean, man, long arms. I mean, the guy I mean, reminds me a little bit of Bonzi Colson for, uh, for Notre Dame. Again, undersized, big, but again, wreaks a lot of havoc because of that wingspan. I like your comparison game tonight. It's strong. I appreciate that, you know. If Kevin Gelly can end up being uh, Colson from Notre Dame, I think Florida State fans will take that. They'll take, even if he's, uh, you know, he may not have to be, you know, Colson. Even if he's, uh, you know, the great value version of him, we'll take that as well. He'll be good. <laughs> It's his free throw here. Knowles closing in on the century mark with an abundance of time to go in this one. 8.27 to be exact. Florida State going to run its record to 5-0 and tonight. Then the Knowles get a few days to get set for that ACC. Big Ten showdown. Florida State going to Rutgers for that test. Again, that's going to be a good matchup for these uh, for these Seminoles because, again, going into a different environment, but also a little bit tougher again. A different team, tougher team that they're going to be playing against. Again, getting ramped up for the ACC play again with that first ACC game, I believe, this upcoming year. I think they start off with Duke at Duke. So, again, they got to start getting ramped up and getting ready to go for this uh, gauntlet that we call the ACC. Frierson, another one. That's this, his fifth. This guy is on video game mode today. I mean, yeah, he's he's not shy of uh, putting it up from several feet beyond the arc. 95-61. Savoy foregoes the shot. C.J. Walker will drain the triple. Big shot that time by C.J. Walker. Again, this is the moment where you want to start working on things that continue to get yourself better. Walker going end to end to play some defense. Seven forty to play. Break in the action here in Tallahassee. Terrence Mann, the veteran leader of this Florida State team, versatile, does a little bit of everything for this Seminole team. Absolutely. Again, you see him right there, big time block. Again, finishing around the rim. 19, 6, and 6 so far with one turnover. Again, a real 3D guy, a guy who can get it done on the defensive end of the floor, offensive end of the floor, and again, it gets to the glass. That's a nice stat line right there. Has protected the basketball well also. Florida State with a commanding lead over the Citadel tonight. Rob Johnson, a Floridian from Lantana, Florida. Southeastern part of the state. Florida State's done a nice job with the pressure tonight for the most part. As I say that, it's stripped <laughs> away and turned over. That was, of course, the announcer kiss of death and the quick trigger three off the mark. Never fails. <laughs> again, one of the things that so like we talked about earlier in the broadcast is key against gets the zone again, pass fakes, and also getting that ball to the middle of the floor. 
and uh, they're making strong, crisp passes. One thing Florida State's done well so far tonight. Got away with one maybe there. P.J. Savoy takes the Knolls over the century mark. 101 to 62. A double dip today in the Tucker Center. The Florida State women big winners over Sacred Heart earlier. They went over the century mark as well. I was talking to uh, a few guys prior to the game, and they talked about us potentially getting to get to potentially 119. And I was like, there's no way we're getting the 119. We could clip that 119 mark tonight. Well, you got six and a half minutes left. This is one of the uh, – Earliest times I can recall Florida State hitting the century mark. And they're not going to just stop there. Citadel is going to keep playing its game, though, which means not bleeding the clock and taking shots themselves. So Florida State will get some opportunities. Citadel right now, three shy of their, uh, their season average of 35 threes, 13 to 32 from the three-point line. Make that thir 13 to 33 from the three-point line. Take another one. Here's 34. <laughs> he was uh, fading left the whole way. Block shot. <laughs> Good pass. Whistle stops play at the 5.15 mark. Johnson, the guilty party. And he is disqualified. Here's the block a moment ago by Obiagu in Florida State. Terrence Mann, a chance to get to the 20-point mark. He's still chasing that career high of 22 points. Sitting on 19 as he steps to the stripe. Johnson's day is done. Five points and three boards. She fouls out in 14 minutes of action. And Terrence Mann with a couple of free throws. Florida State has gotten to the stripe more tonight than uh, maybe they did in the early couple of games on their schedule. Yeah, only two free throws in the first half against Kennesaw State the other night. And again, tonight the Seminoles are, are sitting 15 to 20 from the free throw line. Again, that bodes well. It's one of the things uh, talking earlier to uh, assistant coach Dennis Gates that he said he really wanted that they were going to have a point of emphasis today is really trying to get to the free throw line. Not only getting the free throws, but making free throws. And again, uh, shows that this team is uh, focusing on the game plan tonight. And Gola misfires there, and that foul will be on Florida State and Obiagu. Obiagu, seven foot 240, and you're looking at some bigs that are going to have to play more minutes than maybe uh, Florida State expected, given that Chris Kumaji is on the shelf for an indefinite period of time. Florida State and Leonard Hamilton make that announcement before today's game, and so that means uh, more opportunity for Kevin Gelly and Obiagu and Kofor, obviously a veteran. And again, you know, I, 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 I'm sorry. Go ahead, Adrian. Oh, no, no, I was going to say, but I also think that what that does, that frees up, again, the way Florida State plays now uh, with playing a little bit more small ball. Again, I think it's going to free up some more time, potentially, again, for MJ Walker. I mean, even, you know, Brandon Allen, some of these other guys are going to be able to get some more minutes because, again, but Florida State can go small where they can put Phil Kofer at the five and then you can go Terrence Mann at the four and then freeze up some spots. So, again, some of these other guys, some of these other guards are actually going to be able to get some more minutes. Again, it's a great opportunity for them, and especially later on in the year. Again, the more experience, the more time they can get on the floor, the better it's going to help this team out. 
Man inside could not hit. Another option, and I don't know what their plans are for Raquan Gray, but he's a 6'8 freshman that hasn't played, and so, uh, you know, he's somebody that you could force feed if you needed to if Kamaji was going to be out for that long. Yeah. If you, if you wanted to have another big in the rotation. Absolutely. Raquan Gray, again, highly touted freshman that came in. Again, reminds me a lot of Draymond Green. And, and again, by him not playing, I'm wondering if they're potentially thinking about potentially red shirting him or something to that affect him. And also uh, polite as well because, again, we haven't seen them in the last couple games. So, again, that could be a potential thing right. that, uh, that the coaching staff is looking at. Yeah, Anthony Polite, whose dad, Michael, played for Florida State in the Pat Kennedy era, late 80s, early 90s. Yeah, he comes from good pedigree. Father was a big-time, big-time athlete. I saw his dad early before the game, and his dad looks as young as he did when he was playing <laughs> basketball. I'm like, I'm like, maybe he find the fountain of youth or something. Yeah, point us to it, would you? <laughs> 105-67, we'll get another one. A couple of lane violations tonight as we look at Uger Bauckham, his Citadel team going to drop this one tonight. Drop to 3-3 three and three overall. Then they get three straight home games. They'll get Marist next Friday. And then either Army or UMBC on Saturday, and then James Madison the following Tuesday. Actually, four out of their next five are back at home. Tom, after seeing this Florida State team, what do you think is um, what do you think is the difference? What do you see the pros and cons from say this year's team compared to last year's team? Well, at this point in the season, I think if you're the opposition, it's a little tougher to figure out who the key guys are that you want to take away. Whereas last year, it was sort of the big three. This year, there's more balance. Yeah. There's also better perimeter shooting from the team, from the guys they have out on the floor, compared to, to XRM, who was inconsistent. Isaac and Bacon's game was more of a mid mid-range game than a yeah. three-point game. I think this group right here is a you know as I'm watching them, that it's game a better shooting team overall. But they're gonna, they're going to have to get some uh, you know Kumaji could be big for him and how long he's out. Yeah, it will be. And then now we're seeing right now. Hopefully nothing's wrong with Big IQ over there. Just came down a little bit awkward when he fell. He's grimacing, but he's going to get back up. We'll step aside. It's all Florida State here tonight in Tallahassee. It is a seminal kind of night, winning big over the overmatched, outmanned Bulldogs of the Citadel. And player of the game for Florida State uh, in this one. Brian Angola with 21 points, a career high, career high in three pointers. He was sharp for Florida State. Yes, he just came out tonight and again was locked in, ready to play, again, made shots, got himself going. But it's not only on the offensive end of the floor, but defensive end of the floor as well. Really was a crucial part, really the heart and soul of the Seminole Basketball Club. Brandon Allen to trigger it in, Florida State. With a big offensive showing, but they're not going to get to the uh, the all-time record here at the Tucker Center, which is 133 points. That's at the Tucker Center. 130 against who? Against UCF, 1988. Man, 133 points. <laughs> How about that one? And that's not even the school record at home. That's 138 points against Baptist in 76, which was before my time, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> that must have been back in Tully Gym when they had the uh, the heat on and it was 128 degrees in there. You know what's amazing about that? There was no three-point line, too. That's an amazing <laughs> stat right there. That's a good point. 138 points with no three-point line. Man, that is a – again, I would have loved to be in the, uh, the old uh, Tully gym with that one. Well, what about shot clock? Oh, yeah, that's right. No <laughs> shot clock. <laughs> no shot clock and no three, and they still got 138. Either we were really good or Baptist was really awful. Yeah, so, was maybe down, both. That, yeah, that was a down year for Baptist, as I recall. <laughs> 110 to 72, Knowles, Florida State. Going to clear the bench here pretty soon, I would presume. P.J. Savoy and Forrest still out there. Yes, yeah, wonder we're going to see uh, we're going to see the walk-ons. I saw their face on the you know, little promo tonight, so I was hopefully we get a sighting tonight. Wyatt Wilkes fights for that board. Here's Savoy for three. 
I think they're going to wave that one off. And PJ's thinking, I finally knocked it down. You're going to take that one away from me? <laughs> Come on, Mr. Ref. I'm struggling with my shot. That's it. I've had, one of the, I've had a few of those nights before where you're just like, hey, you know what? You're just going to keep shooting to it finally get Oh, they in. did count it. How about that? There you go. <laughs> PJ look, says, thank you very much. Look at that PJ Savoy shoes, man. He's got a lot of writing on there, man. I think he's a uh, – I don't know what's all on there, but he's letting everybody, he's shouting out everybody back home on those shoes tonight. He'll take that. He's now four for ten on triples. Look at the big guy running the floor with the handle. One of the things that uh, that Coach Ham, you know, we were talking uh you know, a couple a uh, couple weeks ago, is he just one thing he really is liking this year with his guys is really getting those those bigs one through four. If you get it to push the ball, four instead of going to traditional, get it to the point guard. He wants his one through four pushing the ball ahead. So here we go. Everybody going to get a chance to play tonight. Justin Linder checks in. Number twenty, Travis Light out on the floor. Will Miles is in there. Harrison Prieto checks in as well. And Wyatt Wilkes remains on the floor for Florida State. Right now, what we're going to see, I got my money on Travis Light getting the first walk-on basket tonight. You're going light, huh? I'm going okay. light. All right. I've got to stick with the we'll lefty. See. got to so, stick with the lefty. So keep your eyes focused on number 20 here for Florida State. We'll see if Adrian's right. That one's turned over. Buck 32 to play into the rim. Again, as a player, you know, as a player, one of the things you love is when the walk-on get a chance coming. These guys work so hard day in, day out, uh, giving you good looks as a scout team. Here you go. Here's oh. your guy. Oh, oh, he didn't pull the trigger. Got it. Oh, he's got it now. Put it in there, Travis. Oh, oh, that was almost a good call by you, though. You got the right guy to take that first shot. But, yeah, you love seeing these walk-ons get an opportunity uh, to get in again. the guys who – Again, work really hard. Guys giving good looks. And again, well, a, lot of, um, a lot of these guys, tra they practice with the team, but they traveled with the team last year. Yep. They're part of the scout team. Yep. Give them looks in practice. And again, one of the things about it, the players, the scholarship players out there, they are they're excited for these guys because, again, they don't see them just separate, but they see them as part of this team. And again, uh, love games like this, see these guys get an opportunity. Dreams come true for them. Near steal for Wilkes, who's at a Winter Park High School. Orlando. One thing I'm loving over here is watching Coach Dennis Gates. Again, 113-76, and he's over here yelling at the walk-ons about getting the stand. So, again, these walk-ons are getting there. They're getting the very best, so they're not getting, they're not getting them let up. There's 40 minutes in the game, Adrian, and we're going to use all 40 <laughs> to coach them up. <laughs> it doesn't matter what the score is. Good look at Dennis Gates, good recruiter for Florida State. Done a really nice job. Yeah, he's going to be a good head coach for somebody one day. Leandro Allende will check in, sophomore from Puerto Rico. Citadel not backing down on the pressure, making Florida State's walk-ons work. Thirty-five ticks to go. Lindner is out of Memphis. Here's Light again. See my guy Travis Light. Oh. Thought they're gonna give him a shot right here. This is pickup ball here, Adrian. Yeah, Fire it up. Oh, Travis Light misses his man. Harrison way down the floor. Somebody's going to shoot. Will Miles, does he get it? Will Miles, does he get it? Oh, he got a look. Would not go. All Florida State tonight, though, 113-78. to 78. 
Knowles improved to 5-0. and oh. The Citadel drops to 3-3. Three and three. Florida State opened on a big run. Had it on cruise control a little bit, but then uh, opened it up. The athleticism just too much. Career night for Angola. Terrence Mann didn't miss by much. Kofer was solid again, and Trent Forrest back in double figures. Five in double figures overall for Florida State. Matter of fact, six in double figures, so good night all around for, for this Seminole team. Absolutely, again, good contest, and again, again, going from a team, it's a, it's a, it's, it's good to see this team being able to lock in and concentrate to a scouting report. Because uh, again, you play the Kennesaw State team who slowed the game down to now playing a team who it plays the complete opposite within a day, and seeing these guys be willing to come in and seeing them adjust and being uh, prepared uh, is a testament to the coaching staff, but more importantly, is a testament to these these players locking in and being ready to go. Florida State wins it 113 to 78. Next up, Rutgers in that ACC Big Ten Challenge. Our player of the game, Brian Angola, he's standing by with our Catherine Phillips. KP. All right, Brian Angola, a career high 21 points this game, all but three of those in the second half. What was the difference for you in the second half of this game? Well, I feel like we handled the pressure very well, and then my teammates did a very good job trying to find me. I was getting high, so they found me really well, and we moved the ball a lot, so that was, that was pretty much it. You told me yesterday you wanted to be a leader on this team. Tonight you helped lead them to over 100 points. What can you attribute your hot streak to? Well, I feel like, like I said, Playing together, staying together, no matter what the situation is, if we're doing good, we're doing bad, we just stay together. We just play to our strength. Just the quality of that day, we got 12 people playing, so I feel like that's it's a good thing that we're doing this year. All right, Brian, thank you. Congrats thank on the win. Guys. Thank you very much, Catherine. Good job tonight. Florida State gets the big win at the Tucker Center. The Knowles are now 5-0. and oh. All games airing on the ESPN networks are streaming live on the ESPN app. To watch this entire game on replay as well as other games on our family of ESPN networks, log on to watchespn.com or download the Watch ESPN app. This has been a presentation of ESPN. For our entire team tonight, including Catherine Phillips, my partner Adrian Crawford, Tom Block, saying so long from Tallahassee. Florida State wins it and wins it big, 113-78. The Seminoles still unblemished here in the 2017-2018 season. So long from Tallahassee.